Hey, this is Drake, and in this video, we're going to be talking about playback buttons. Now, if you saw any of my previous videos, especially the uh, Bethel show rundown, we have a lot of playback buttons, and I'm going to show you how to make playback buttons. They are very, very useful for storing a lot of cues to, and especially color or movement, any of those types of things, and it's just with a click of a button, um, you can launch those and be changing stuff. So let's dive right into playback buttons. Okay, in our software here, again, on the left-hand side, we have our playback buttons window. Now, playback buttons are essentially allowing you to launch cues uh, in a certain order or how many ever you want to have on one page. So what we normally use it for is color. And so let's give the demonstration of color. Um, let's select our LED part here, and we're going to be changing the color. So. I like to store my color in RGB and then add stuff. So I always start with red. I record red first. And let's go to our, sorry, playback buttons here. And we're going to hit record. It's going to pop up the same window that it always does. We're going to select color and select a square, just like we would a fader. This is going to pop up our window and we're going to type LED red. Enter. Boom. There is our first playback button, which is essentially a cue. Now we can go back here and I'm going to show you, we're going to make it zero red, full green. So that way we're making a green one. We're going to hit record, color, space, LED, green, and the last one real fast, blue. Record, color, LED, blue. And let's clear the console. All right, so we have three playback buttons, which is changing the color of our LED parts. So let's turn our intensity up here so we can actually see our fixture, which is white, all three colors on at the same time. Now up here above our buttons, we have a few options. Uh, you have go, pause, release, select, actions. And over here you have direct cue, multi-select selection, and your settings window, which we'll get into in a minute. So essentially, you're gonna be wanting to stay on the go to be able to trigger these cues. So if I select go here, and I select LED red, as you can see, it plays it, and it changes it red. Now it's basically, it's storing a cue, so it's giving us that two and a half second fade time that comes stock. You can change that um, in my other video, I show you how to change the uh, fade time of a cue. And if we go here to uh, green and we select that, it changes to green and the same with blue. Also, our two and a half second fade time. And if we want to stop anything in particular, so say we want it to go back to white, we don't want it to be running any of these, you select a release, Click on whatever you want to release. Usually it has the orange or yellow triangle in the middle and we are back to white. So we just released that cue completely. Now, say we want to edit our LED red. Uh, the best way to do this is actually clicking the select button and selecting it. So now as you can see up here, we have selected that red. And in our cue list values editor, it pops up here. Uh, if we go back to our playback buttons and we select green, back into our keyless values, we're at LED green. That's the fastest way to jump around once you make a bunch of these. And you can store hundreds and hundreds of playback buttons, whatever you want. The actions button's really cool. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and launch green, um, or red, sorry. Actions lets you click on a uh, cue uh, in your playback buttons and you have things like your intensity, settings, things like that, right in here. So if you made a playback button for a fixtures at, to go to 100% intensity and then all of a sudden you want it to be 80, instead of having to reprogram it, you could click actions, click on that cue and pull the intensity down to 80% or 50%, whatever you want to. It's just a quick uh, hack to kind of get around having to restore stuff if you're not going to be using that all the time, but you randomly need to change it. The other thing that we do is we color coordinate all of our playback buttons. 
And the way to do that is in your settings page over here. So if we click on our settings, and there's cue this color right here, which is on. Uh, now you're gonna need to click change under the cue list color, and this brings up our color option. So I like to color it in order. If it's red, it's gonna be red. So you select your cue and select your color. Pretty simple. Select your cue, select your color, cue, color. Done, and you can click X. Now they are color coordinated, red, green, blue. It makes it a little bit faster, especially if you're doing colors. You can see the color without even having to read the label. Um, you can make some custom colors uh, by selecting anywhere on here and then moving your contrast up and down, brighter or darker. So you can make some like CTO-ish colors and things like that uh, built into the software. It really helps you lay it out and see everything at a glance. And then I tend to make like all intensities a color and all positions a color, things like that. So I can really see it closely and quickly. Last but not least, we have multi-select. Multi-select is fantastic when you have multiple groups of, say, color. So if you have LED PARs, Vipers, and some LED tape on your stage, and you want all three to turn blue at the same time, instead of having to click blue, blue, blue really fast, you can click this multi-select button. And what that allows you to do is select multiple cues. As you can see, I just selected all three of those and you can click go at the same time. Now, it doesn't really work in this case because all three of them are trying to do something to the fixture, but if you had three groups of fixtures, you could multi-select three groups of fixtures to blue, click go, and they would all change at the same time. It really helps for some of those explosive looks on moments um, to be able to select what you want ahead of time and just hit go, and it'll all change when, as soon as you hit go. So that is a basic overview of playback buttons in Martin MPC Onyx. If you want to get more in depth with this software, make sure to check out our other videos.